Hi everybody, welcome. I'm Sharon. This is my channel, Sharon Sews. I'm happy that you're here. Today, we are going to do a quick little sew along to a McCall's pattern, a fairly new release. I'm actually wearing it. Little dolman sleeve, some cuffs. Simple knit. Got a couple different versions here, and we'll have the fourth one when we're done with the sew along. The pattern is McCall's 8024. When I first saw it released, I liked it, but I wasn't in love with it. It looks a little boring, doesn't it? Let me bring it up so you can see a little bit more. The great thing about this pattern, though, is depending on your fabric choices, you get so many different looks. I love the ease of it. It only takes two yards of fabric and two hours to complete. It's perfect for beginner and you do not need a serger to sew this. I sewed it on my sewing machine and I will show you that also. Now the great thing about dome and sleeve tops is they're just so easy to wear. They're comfortable and I for one love it when they come back in style. They cycle back and forth like most fashion trends. I remember back in the mid 80s, I had a red one that I loved. I wore that thing to death. I think it had a cowl neck on it. I know it had a great big dolman and it had a big, big band at the bottom. One of my favorite tops ever. And I remember probably mid 2000s maybe, I'll have to look. Simplicity had released a pattern, same style with the dolman sleeves and the big band and the, very similar to this actually. And it was a huge hit in the sewing blogging world and on patternreview.com. I'll look for that pattern number and I'll link it below because you might have it in your stash and you can pull it out. Well, I guess it was actually white, not red. So the thing with dolman sleeve tops, as they were saying, they're just, they're easy to wear, easy to sew, comfortable. And the thing I actually like about this McCall's pattern is depending on your fabric, it's gonna look completely different. I am wearing fabric that I purchased from SR Harris um, because I tend to purchase a lot of fabric from SR Harris. I bought it last year, last winter. I was gonna make myself a one shoulder bodycon dress to wear for the holidays. Well, here's the deal. I don't wear one shoulder bodycon dresses and Minnesota is really cold during the holidays. Where would I have actually worn that? I loved the idea, but for my lifestyle, it was not practical. So I put the fabric aside and I've got a holiday party coming up soon where everyone pretty much wears jeans. So I pulled this fabric out. It's autumn comfort zone. It's, it's pretty wild. It's a knit, it's got tool. Uh, stitched on it. It's got sequins and it's got faux leather fringe. I just really like it. I think it's very fun. And this is how different the top can look depending on fabric. This here is fabric I purchased at Hobby Lobby. It was on one of my recent fabric haul videos, I believe. So this was a remnant. This is a lightweight French terry, which works great in this pattern. And I paired it with a lightweight um, it's, it might be considered a sweater knit, I'm not sure, but it's an animal print also from Hobby Lobby. I color blocked the bottom because I did not have enough fabric here. And then the back, I simply used the animal print on the back. I also added a little band, color blocked at the bottom here to tie in the front and the back. And to show you another example of how different it can look, here is a stretch velvet. This is also fabric from SR Harris last year. Purchased it to make a dress, got it home. There was a huge flaw right down the middle. So there wasn't enough for a dress. But I'm glad I hung on to it because there was enough for this top. It's kind of a, um, it's a bluish green. It's got a little silver sparkle in it. So I think it's perfect for right now. I'll wear it with a long dangly silver necklace and some jeans or I'll just, where it is, it's okay. She's she's not gonna stay. She, her base is broken, so there we go. 
Uh, the fabric that I've chosen today for the sew along is a sweater knit. It's a fairly lightweight sweater knit from Emma One Sock. Now the thing with this pattern that calls 8024 is again, as I mentioned, you only need two yards of fabric. So you can, you can splurge and just two hours of your time. And I think this would be really cute in a stretch lace. Could you imagine stretch lace? You'd have to wear cami under it, of course. That could be very pretty. And with that said, let's get started on this sew along. Do you notice I just changed? I just want to pop in real quick and tell you, be sure to stick around to the end because I will model all four versions for you. The call is 8024 and we are going to sew view B. That is this one right here. That is a little bit longer and it has the cuffs at the bottom of the sleeves. You will cut out your pattern pieces. This comes in a small, medium, large, or extra large. Keep in mind that it is loose fitting. It's quite generous, so you may have to play with the fit a little bit. For example, typically I would cut a medium and grade out to a large at my hip line and I discovered for this one that a medium all the way through is just fine. And if you typically need a full bust adjustment, you will not need it for this top. There's enough ease built into the design. So cut out your pattern pieces and then you will follow the layout for view B. I've already cut out my pieces. You will simply take your 60 inch wide fabric, you will fold it in half and following the cutting layout, cut out a front, a back, two cuffs, and your neck band. As you can see, I have my neck band, I have my front, I have my back, and I also have the cuff. Because the front and the back pieces look pretty similar, I'm going to mark front and back with these little office supply stickers. I'm just simply going to take one of the round stickers and I'm going to write F for front. So I'm going to remove the pattern piece. If you're confident you won't mix them up, you don't need to do this. If you don't have office stickers, I'm just going to put a little F right there. That tells me that's the front. That tells me that's the front and they've already marked the back. The neckline is different on them, but again, it could be easy to mix that up. If you don't have stickers, as I was saying, uh, painter's tape works really well too. Blue painter's tape, it will not leave a mark. Let's just set this aside. The other thing you want to do to prepare before we start sewing is you want to make the marks on the pattern. You can see this is the cuff. There is a square here and here. And when you sew this to the top, you're going to be matching it to the top seam here. So you're going to want to mark that. I like to mark it on the right side of the fabric. And the reason being, I am not sure which is the, here we go. The reason being is you're going to stitch this together and then you're going to fold it wrong sides together. So I'm just going to take a removable fabric marker and I'm just going to simply mark that dot. I'm using a magic pen. It doesn't matter what you use. You just want to be able to see it. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Here is my, you could use chalk. Chalk works for you. Just need to be able to match that up. Here's the other one. Okay, so that's the cup. I'm gonna set that aside. Here's the band. You want to mark this mark. I cut a medium, so I wanna mark this one. Again, I like to do it on the right side of the fabric because this band is going to get folded wrong sides together. This band or this mark is what you're going to match up with your shoulder. So go ahead and 
mark that on the right side of your fabric. Make sure you're marking within the seam allowance. Even though it's a removable marker, don't want to take chances, right? And I've got that marked. So step one. The next step is to pin all of your pattern pieces together. Because there's only a front and a back, two cuffs and a neck band, we're gonna pin all of the seams together before we bring it over to the sewing machine. We now have both of the cuff seams pinned together. We're going to stitch there and there. We have the neck band pinned together. This is going to be the center back seam of the neck band. And we have the front and back pinned together. We are going to stitch the shoulder seam and the underarm seam. So let's go ahead and go to the sewing machine and stitch those. By the way, if you do have a serger, you could simply serge these seams. I do not have a serger. I'm going to be showing you how to stitch the knit on your sewing machine. Let's go over there now. When I want to sew knits on my sewing machine, I use the zigzag function. So the default on my machine is a four for the width and 1.5 for the length. So I'm simply going to make that very narrow. I want as narrow as I can go. In this case, it's a 0.5. You can see that's almost a straight stitch. And then I'm going to select the length and I'm gonna make that a three. So here's what it looks like. It's just gonna be a long, slightly zigzag, and that gives enough movement with the knit that it will stretch and it won't pop the threads when I'm wearing my outfit. I'm now going to stitch the back seam of the neck band. Place that at five by seven inch. Forward, back stitch to lock it, and continue on. your thread. Now I'm going to stitch the cuffs. Again, five eighths inch seam. And the second cuff. Seams are stitched. Now on the cuff, we're going to go to the ironing board. I'm going to press the seam open. On the neck band, we're going to go to the ironing board and press the seam open. On your front and back, you have two options. Knit does not ravel and you can simply you can simply press the seam open if you wish. And you'd be done, it'd be fine. I'm actually going to take my zigzag, make it a wider zigzag. It was at 0.5, remember, for the, the seam stitch, which you can see if I pull that, it's, it's not gonna pop. But I'm gonna make it a wider zigzag. I'm gonna go to about three. I'm gonna keep the, so the width is now three. I'm gonna keep the length three. And I'm just gonna simply come and stitch right next to that first row of stitches that I did. And then I'm gonna turn the seam. Here's the seam we just stitched. You can see the almost straight stitch, slight zigzag with the zigzag next to it. I'm just gonna trim off the excess fabric. I have trimmed that seam, the excess fabric off the seam. I'm gonna take it to the ironing board and I'm going to press it towards the back of the top.
the next step in the instructions is to attach the neck band to the top. So we stitched that five eighths inch seam in the back of the neck band and pressed it open. Then at the ironing board, you simply take the neck band and fold it wrong sides together. Go ahead and match up notches, notches, as well as those marks that you did earlier preparing the pattern. This one ironed up really nicely and is holding together really well, but your knit might not do that. For example, the black top that I sewed, I had to pin that one. And the stretch velvet, that one was kind of a, that was a little bit of a bear to sew. Stretch velvet on the wrong side can be slippery. And I had to do a lot of pins on that one to control it. I'm gonna go ahead and put pins in it just to show you. Just to show you. Um, and it's gonna help control when you're pinning this to the top of the, to the neckband, to the top. I am matching up. I'm putting enough pins that I think I need to control it. So I've got one at the center back. There's your seam right there. I've got pins at that mark. That's the shoulder seam. I've got a pin at the notch. And then what I wanna do, I also wanna put a pin at the center front. So to mark that I'm simply going to fold this in half. I'm gonna match up those two darts and the center back seam. There's my center front. So I'm going to put a pin at the center front because I wanna match that with the center front of the top. So let's set this aside for the moment. And here is our top. So we've sewn the shoulder seams, the underarm seams. And at this point, I think it's probably pretty obvious the front and the back. You can leave this on there if you wish to. You probably do not need it. I did go to the ironing board after I trimmed this seam and I pressed it towards the back. What I want to do is I want to mark the center front and the center back. And to do that, I'm simply going to match up the shoulder seams like so. And then where that fold is, that's gonna be my center back. So I'm going to slip a pin in there. So I'm gonna match the center back seam with that center back. And then the same with the front. I'm matching the shoulder seams. I'm also matching the notches and where that fold is, that's gonna be my center front. I'm simply going to add a little pin to mark it. And then let's unfold it and place it down. Now, before we attach the neckband to the top, there's a little trick that I like to do and I'm gonna share it with you. I use this when I sew knit tops and add a band. So I've already determined, remember the blue is gonna be my right side, this is my wrong side. So I simply take a measuring tool. I like this little sliding ruler and I'm going to go to the raw edge and using a removable marking device, I'm gonna make a mark at five eighths of an inch. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the fold and I'm going to measure that. And in this case, it's also five eighths of an inch. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to the fold. Let's see, let's put that fold on the outside. That'll be easier, easier to mark, I believe. So I'm going to the fold and I'm marking five eighths of an inch. And I just chose the wrong side. That's the eraser side. Okay, five eighths of an inch and a little mark. And go down a couple inches, five eighths of an inch and a little mark. You know, it might not be five eighths of an inch. In this case, it is for this neck band, but some neck bands are narrower and some are wider. What I'm doing is I am marking what the finished width of this neck band should be. And the reason I'm doing that is sometimes, not always, depending on your knit and depending on the design, uh, sometimes when you stitch it, that one's not very clear. 
sometimes when you stitch this to that band and you're and you're stretching it to fit, and if you're following here along your sewing machine, the five eighths inch, this can get narrower or wider. And that's what we're trying to prevent. So I will show you this little trick when we stitch it. It's just a way to help make sure that your band is going to be even all the way around your neckline. And I wanna get one more in there. I have that all marked now. I have that all marked. And so now what we wanna do is we want to attach the band to the top. And to do so, we're gonna start at the back. Remember we marked the back and the front and uh, the blue's my right side and I want right sides together. So I'm going to go to the center back, that's the seam, and I'm gonna mark or match the right sides together. So the seam is marked, lined up with the pin, and I'm also matching raw edges and start pinning. So I'm gonna secure it with a pin here and a pin here. The next thing I'm going to do is I wanna match it up at the side seam. So that's where we marked the side seam earlier. And I've got the seam pressed towards the back. And again, I want right sides together. And I'm going to mark, or I'm going to match that mark to the shoulder seam. I think I said side seam earlier. This is the shoulder seam. And I'm going to secure that in place with a pin. And then I'm going over to the other side. I'm gonna do the same with this side. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a scissor and I'm gonna trim that. That's that's not, it's not even there. I don't like that. I'm just gonna trim. I must have stretched it just slightly when I was stitching the seam. There, that's better. Okay, again, it is pressed towards the back and I am taking that mark that we made earlier for the shoulder seam. I'm lining it up with the shoulder seam, matching the top edges of the fabric and I'm putting in a pin to secure it. Next step, let's match the center front. You marked it with a pin and right sides together, I'm gonna mark the center front or I'm going to pin the center front of the band with the center front of the top, and I'm going to secure it with pins. I think you got the hang of it now. You've seen enough pins that you can maneuver this and handle it well at the sewing machine. I'm matching up the notches. I'm matching the front notches, and I'm going to pin that in place. And I also want to put, I think another pin in between the notch and the shoulder seam. And I also, I'm going to put another pin between the center back and the shoulder seam. And one more pin here between this side of the center back and the shoulder seam. And I need to match up the notch on the front and I'm gonna put in another little pin. You can see that you do need to stretch that neck band a bit. And that's why I'm putting a pin in between the two of them. That's gonna help me control that stretch while we stitch that together. And I think I'm gonna do one more here. Can you see, see how the neck band is smaller? But that's good because it's gonna fit nicely on your body. It's not gonna gap out. So I'm just gonna grab another pin. I'm gonna grab another pin right there. It's okay, put as many pins as you need to help control it. A little bit of preparation up front will help the final product. Uh, we've got this pinned. 
we have the neckband pinned together. And we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna go ahead and stitch the seam. Let's go. We're at the sewing machine and we're going to stitch the band to the neck edge of the top. And remember we measured from the fold of the neck band and marked with our removable marking pen. And we marked that all the way. And that's to make sure that the band is going to stay in equal width while we stitch it. The setting again is our slight zigzag stitch and I'm removing pins. If your machine has a needle down function, it can be helpful while you're doing this. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna stitch and I'm going to follow those markings that I made. Removing my needle, or not my needle, removing my pins as I go along. Here's my mark. So basically what I'm doing, instead of following, typically you would follow um, your 5 8 inch seam allowance there. I am following this line and then making sure it's even here. You will have to stretch this band slightly. Remember when we pinned it? You're gonna stretch it slightly and continue to stitch on the markings that you made. Removing pins as you get to them, making sure, you know, take your time, just make sure that your fabric is not bunching up as you are stitching. There's nothing worse than putting your neck band on and you're all happy with what you did and you pull it out and they, uh, top of the fabric was bunched up because you didn't catch it. So I'm, you can see I'm just taking my time here and I'm following that line that I want. And you can kind of tell with your fingers that the fabric is bunched up underneath. You see how I need to stretch this to get it to fit? That's the reason. Oh, it looks like I got a pin on the bottom there. Let's make sure that's out of the way. That's the reason I like to measure from here to here. I want to make sure, even as I'm stretching, that my band is free to be them. Because sometimes when you're stretching and you need to stretch to get to fit, the, the width from here to here narrows. And let's just continue on to the end, to the back. And there you can see, there's our band. Looks pretty even to me. I have gone ahead and I stitched a second row of zigzag stitches close to the first row of stitches and then trimmed that seam just like we did on the side seam and the shoulder seams. And then I pressed that seam toward the body of the shirt. And there you can see that neckband's looking pretty nice. It's nice and even because we did the mark along the fold. And now we're going to the machine. I'm gonna show you how to do a real nice, even top stitching. And I'm going to use a special foot. You don't have to. I have a Fav 2056 and I like to use this knit edge, knife edge foot. As you can see, if you look at it, let's see, there you go. Do you see that? What it does when it's on there is the fabric goes in there. The fabric goes right here 
along this edge and it just keeps it nice and even when you do the top stitch. I'll show you. I'm starting at the center back seam and I've got the edge of that knife edge foot right along the seam where the band attaches to the body of the top. And now I'm just going to slowly stitch all the way around the neck edge. What we're doing is we're securing the seam we press down towards the body of the shirt, to the shirt so it doesn't flop up. Let's go. Here's that top stitching that we just did with the knife edge foot. Just keeps a nice equal distance all the way around. And then you can see on the back, on the inside, it stitches over the zigzag stitches that we did to finish off the seam. Now, if you don't have one of those special feet, that is not a problem. All you would simply do is stitch here, and then you would just make sure you have the equal distance from the seam where the band attaches to the top and just use the edge of your presser foot. Following along with the instructions, we just finished putting the neck band to the neck edge and top stitching. And now we're going to the sleeve finish. Since we're using the sleeve band, we've already stitched the seam of the sleeve band together and we pressed it open. The next thing is we're going to fold it wrong sides together and then we're going to attach it to the sleeve. So here is the sleeve band. As you can see, there's the seam that we stitched, pressed it open. Here I've got one folded already. You're simply going to take this and fold it in half. I find it easier to actually place my finger here while I fold it in half, and that just keeps that seam from bunching up down at the edge. And just kind of maneuver it a little bit and match up the seam, put a pin in it right there, and then I just like to kind of move that fabric a little bit so it's even. It's got notches right there that you're going to match up to match and pin. And there is a mark that we made earlier. You know, do you see the little chalk mark right there? and the chalk mark here. So you want to match those two together. Put a pin. And I would probably do one more pin. We're just making sure those raw edges are together. Next step is we're going to pin this to the sleeve and we're gonna stitch it in place. I'm gonna head and pin this one together. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take that seam of the cuff and match it to the underarm seam. Don't do what I did on this one. Do you see? This is the top of my shirt. There's the seam of the cuff matched very nicely to the, to the top seam of my shirt. It should have been matched under here. Don't do that. Do it the right way. Go ahead and match up the notch and the mark that you made on the cuff matches to the top seam, the shoulder seam. Uh, pin that all the way around. Then you're simply gonna take it to the sewing machine like you did the neck band. You're going to stitch the seam. You're going to finish it with the zigzag stitch and then trim it. I've done this one already. And then when you're done, press that seam up towards the sleeve. And we're almost done. The final step is to hem. This tells you to make a five eighths inch hem. It tells you to stitch a quarter inch from the edge and then turn your hem up, pulling in the fullness. I have found that you don't need to do that. Let me show you how I hem this. One thing I do wanna mention before we hem it is try your top on before you hem. You might find that you need to take this side seam in. I usually cut mine just um, half inch extra on each side. Every knit behaves differently. Some are going to be a tighter fit, some looser. So I give myself just an extra half inch to play with and then I adjust the seam before I hem it. So let's hem it. 
I like to use steam a seam on hems that are knit. And it's just simply one quarter inch wide. It's almost like a fusible interfacing. It comes in a roll and it peels off. The instructions have you take it and place on the edge of your knit and press in place. Now I have found that pressing in place isn't enough to hold it there. So I take my iron and I just very lightly, very lightly, don't press it down too hard, but just a little bit and that will help seal it to the knit because you need to be able to peel it off like that. So I'm just gonna go around the whole bottom of the hem and press on the steam seam. And now that we've pressed the steam seam on the wrong side of the fabric for the hem, we're simply going to peel it off. The adhesive is going to stay on the knit and you're gonna take your ruler. I like the seam gauge, the slider. I've got it set at five A7 inch, which is what the hem allowance is on this top. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start removing the paper and the adhesive stays. And then I'm going to fold it up. And I'm gonna measure five eighths of an inch. You do that all the way around. Now the knit, you can press out any curve that might be there. I measure five eighths of an inch, hand press it in place and then I very lightly, again, press it and that's helping to set the adhesive from the seam to seam to the hem. It's gonna make it a little bit easier when you're hemming, makes it a little more stable for one thing and it does not affect the drape of the knit. So you can see I stretched a little bit there on that side seam. And you'll also notice I did not finish the hem, the inside of my hem. You can, if you want to, you could put a zigzag stitch. If you've got a serger, go ahead and serge that edge. It's knit, it's not gonna ravel. Honestly, no one's gonna see the inside of my top, except for y'all, because you're watching. And yeah, it gathers in the way. This one's a little short. And the nice thing about this steam seam, if you don't give it a lot of steam with the iron, you can still pull it away and reposition up. Just a great little tool when you are hemming knits. Also helps control that knit. You see how it's not folding over. It's gonna make it a lot easier when we hem. That is ready to be hemmed. We're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna use our slight zigzag stitch and we're gonna stitch one half inch from the edge. Back at the sewing machine and the very last step and our top is done. I'm stitching the hem in place, going with the guideline half inch on my sewing machine. And we're just going to stitch that all the way around. <laughs> 